going to come at it from a somewhat different angle, but in a way picking up on some of what Andy was saying, we need individualism, we need egoism, so I'm going to talk a lot about altruism. But just as I started thinking about this, you know, it seems to me, call me naive, it seems to me that it's not that hard to see that people of different races are all manner of good, bad, smart, stupid, hardworking, listless, and so on. Most of us in this country have in-your-face experience of this. Now, obviously, some regions geographically aren't cosmopolitan. There isn't the diversity of peoples, you know, in some small town in Alabama and so on. But whether it be black-white race or other comparable sorts of differences among people, everybody has some experience, I think, again, for the most part in this day and age in this country, with people who are from Mexico or men versus women or, you know, most of us have in-your-face regular experience of peoples having very different characters despite their similarities along some of these superficial markers. This is not a hard thing to get. That is the idea that race doesn't make a difference to a person's character. That's not a really difficult generalization for a human being to grasp. Yet we have a considerable degree of racism still in this country. Now I think, so part of what I want to be getting at is why is that? And that's where I think altruism is going to play a role. But before I get there, I mean I think it's noteworthy that well, everybody knows you're not supposed to be a racist. You know, in this country, for the most part, everybody knows racism is wrong. Ask somebody who believes that, sincerely believes that, to explain why it's wrong, and you actually hear a lot of circular, vacuous sputtering. Non sputtering, non explanations that repeat that it's wrong, but don't actually capture why. What are some of the more coherent explanations that people will give you as to what's wrong with racism? I'm not saying these are good. I'm not saying these are coherent. I mean, they might be coherent, but they're not that good. But what are some of the kinds of things you would hear if you ask college students, as I have sometimes? You wouldn't want to be treated that way. I'm not going to take the time to think about all of these out loud now or to dissect them, but these are the better explanations. You wouldn't want to be treated that way, so don't be racist. You shouldn't generalize. Don't discriminate as if that's the problem, discrimination per se, differentiating, right? Slightly better, don't judge people by appearances. The wrongness of racism is basically treated as an article of faith, even among those who are most fervently and sincerely opposed to it. Well, if we don't understand what's wrong with racism, if we don't deeply, wholly understand that, we're not gonna be able to get rid of it. We're not gonna be sufficiently motivated to get rid of it will continue to adopt policies that exacerbate it and make all of us, of all races, worse off. So I want to focus on how the moral premise of altruism, I think, impedes our ability to understand what's wrong with racism. But again, one more preliminary. Well, what is the wrong of racism? Let's just say something about that. It's stupid. It that's true, that sounded like something Andy might say. But it's stupid, I mean, it's stupid. It judges people by an irrelevant marker of merit and thus defeats the point of judging a person, right? To exclude people on the basis of race or to include or favor people on the basis of race is self-defeating. It's self-defeating for you, harmful to the practitioner of racism, right? Because irrelevant markers don't tell you what you need to know about a person. Is this guy going to be a hard worker if I hire him? Is this going to be a trustworthy bank teller? Is this going to be a level-headed babysitter if I have her watch the kids this weekend, right? When you sort people on irrelevant grounds, you deprive yourself of the good that you could gain from accurate evaluation of them, right? Now, Ayn Rand's essay on racism emphasizes its crudeness. And I want to make clear, I'm not talking, even though racism is our subject, this applies to other sorts of groupism that group people on the basis of accidental or inherited characteristics. I happen to be a woman, right? I happen to be white. He happens to not look white like me, and so, right? I mean, but things that are unchosen characteristics as opposed to I choose to be an objectivist or somebody chooses to be an environmentalist or Republican or whatever, okay. So what I'm saying about racism does not just apply to race per se. But what's interesting, I mean, one of the really striking things is how Ayn Rand, in that essay on racism, emphasizes its crudeness. It views people as 
animals, not as volitional agents, individuals. It's physical determinism. Now, objectivism understands that ideas rule the world and that a person's ideas, his premises, guide his actions, and his actions shape his character. What does racism say? No, they don't. It's not ideas. What does shape your character? And here, excuse me, I'm going to be disgusting. Spit. It's all in your saliva. It's all in your DNA. That's the physical determinism. That's where the action is, according to the racist, right? It's all physical. It's all in your body, right? Now, think, here's altruism finally, okay. Think about the moral premise that steers our culture, altruism. Altruism doesn't care that you will suffer as a result of racism, you the racist, right? Because again, it's self-defeating, it's stupid even for the person engaging in racism, right? Altruism doesn't care that you will suffer as a result of racism. That would be selfish to care about that. Implicitly, altruism teaches us that morality is arbitrary. There aren't good reasons to revere the things and revile the things that you should, according to altruism, you just should. Be nice to people even when they are unworthy, right? That's what a sacrifice means. Do for others when they don't deserve it. It's especially noble when the recipient is weak in some way, dumb, impaired, irresponsible. So the message you get from altruism is don't be racist. Be nice to the black guy. He needs it. Which fails to expose the falseness of believing that he does need it because he is inferior goods. Altruism relishes inferior goods, right? It wants lesser specimens. It wants the feeble weakness. This is Ellsworth Tui. We feed on sores, right? So in a sense, altruism concedes the premise of racism, or at best, it bypasses it. It proceeds as if a person's, an individual's actual worth is unimportant. Effectively, altruism says, yeah, blacks may be inferior, but that doesn't matter. Well, of course, in truth, it does matter to how you should judge a person, what is this person's character, right? And blacks aren't inferior. But altruism trains you to look past the facts of an individual person's merit, his actual abilities and character. Rather, it says, train your eye on weakness. That's what you're looking for, okay? One last point. Um, the fact value gap is also implicated here, I think. Many people think racism is wrong, but they don't get that it's impractical, that it's counterproductive, self-defeating, because facts and values occupy two different universes in their minds. Social cues tell them they're supposed to consider racism wrong, right? It's in that junk drawer of stuff I'm supposed to think, but factual evidence isn't proof of that. There is no proof. It's a matter of faith, because it's a matter of morality, not reason. So again, I think the fact value gap and altruism really contribute to the persistence of racism when it, you would expect in some ways we'd, we'd be a lot further past it. Thanks. Mm -hmm.